Hey guys, today we're driving the 2021 Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid. We have a very interesting crossover SUV here today. This was actually the first plug-in hybrid SUV to market a few years ago when it first came out. Of course, now we have the RAV4 Prime and lots of other great offerings. But this is kind of just an interesting vehicle to discuss because there's some very cool technology underpinning this relatively boring looking crossover that could be maybe predictive of some future stuff that's put into Mitsubishi's performance products or future models. So there's a lot to discuss in this video. Let's walk you around this Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid, talk about what it is, what it's like to drive and live with, and uh, take it from there. A couple things you need to know. This has a 24 mile electric only range. And then the gasoline engine kicks in, acts like a generator. It powers the front and rear electric motors, which are single speed direct drive motors. Kind of cool. We have a 70 kilowatt motor in the rear, a 60 kilowatt motor in the front, I believe. This was also upgraded for the 21 model year. We have a 2.4 liter four cylinder engine instead of the previous two liter engine. It makes 221 combined horsepower. That's all you need to know. And uh, it feels pretty good. The power level is fine. And with that 24 mile electric only drive range, this makes for a pretty nice usable plug-in hybrid. Now, of course, the new Mitsubishi Outlander is already out and it's updated, refreshed. It looks fantastic. We're gonna test that in a couple weeks. That's based on the Nissan Rogue. This is not that. The plug-in hybrid updated Mitsubishi Outlander is probably coming out in 2023. We're gonna see much more range from this. This is kind of the outgoing model year. So this is, think of this video as a little bit of a send off. And uh, if you're interested in one of these might be a pretty good used or uh, discounted proposition. This is a $37,000 car starting MSRP. As tested, we're about 38 grand. But since this is a plug-in hybrid, it has a 13.8 kilowatt hour battery pack underneath. You can see it right here. It qualifies for some tax incentives and federal rebates. Uh, you could probably get into one of these for around 30 grand, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, depending on the dealer. You're not gonna see the crazy markups on this like you would a RAV4 Prime. So could be kind of a compelling option if you just want a regular car that's spacious, comfortable, maybe a bit bland, but also has the plug-in hybrid powertrain. Let's show you in the trunk here. We have the slowest opening tailgate in the industry, I think, We're very close to it. Maybe it closes slower than it opens. Uh, no spare tire, unfortunately, because we've got electric motors and batteries and all sorts of uh, wizardry going on back there. But we do get a tire repair kit, a jack, and qu quite a bit of cargo space back here. The Outlander used to have a third row, so we still have some remnants of that with these rear cup holders and cargo space holders and stuff, but uh, that is no longer the case. I'm glad they got rid of the third row because there's really not a lot of room back here for that. However, there is quite a bit of room in the back seats, the second row, and there's some pretty cool configurations. So there's a sequence to fold these seats down. Headrest first, they even number them. Two, pull this up, that flips forward, and then three, pull this down. And look at that, you've got a lay flat loading space. You can throw mountain bikes back here, whatever you want. You've got a lot of room. That's pretty nice. And then everything just kind of goes back up in reverse. And of course you can adjust your backrest to whatever you prefer. Pretty neat. Getting in the back seat, I have plenty of leg room. Nice amount of headroom back here. I can see over the front seats, great visibility throughout this cabin. In the front though, we've got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, all that, a lot of physical controls, a lot of physical buttons, but kind of an interior design that looks like it's straight out of the 90s or late 2000s. Not much really exciting here. However, we have some really nice touch points. Soft touch leather, very well padded armrests in the front. And in the back, we get these awesome paddle shifters, which we'll talk about a little bit later, and a decent infotainment. It's got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. That's pretty much all you need. You've got some old school looking displays, but uh, a nice climate control system with physical knobs and buttons. 
some buttons down there that again look like they're from the 90s and this funky little shifter design which is very similar to the prius but it actually has a stock which is cool a nice and also not so nice interior at the same time kind of an interesting blend so let's talk a little bit more about the plug-in hybrid tech this has super all-wheel control which is basically mitsubishi's torque vectoring all-wheel drive it uses brake torque vectoring to kind of distribute power and uh, give you traction where you need it most think of this as more suv rally car than suv off-roader um, it only has 7.3 inches of ground clearance so anywhere you go off-road you're going to be limited by that but as a winter driving vehicle as a snow driving vehicle this should perform really well i've seen some videos in uh, foreign countries of these sliding around doing massive drifts on frozen lake beds and uh, we're not going to be able to do that today unfortunately but this might be a very good all-weather vehicle for people who live in snowy climates here's the charge situation here we have a standard electric car charging outlet right here you can plug 110 240 in here uh, from zero to full charge on 240 it'll take about four hours to charge or there's a Chatamo quick charging option right there uh, where it takes substantially less time. I think this car looks better in black than any other color. Um, otherwise though, it's not particularly good looking or inspiring. And that does translate to the driving experience, unfortunately. This is a soft, cushy, comfy SUV with some very cool technology underneath, but unfortunately it doesn't necessarily translate to an exciting driving experience. Still though, a lot to discuss here and a lot to talk about and think about for Mitsubishi, kind of cool stuff. All right, let's show you up front. We have this 2.4 liter four cylinder engine. It's very quiet, very smooth. It acts like a generator to power the front and rear electric motors. It can directly drive the front wheels as well. Uh, it is rated for 26 miles to the gallon on its own. So you've used up all your battery, you're driving down the highway, you can expect about 26 mpg honestly you could probably expect a little bit more low 30s from this in normal internal combustion engine mode let's hop on the front seat and talk about some of the drive modes because that is one advantage to this 2021 mitsubishi outlander plug-in hybrid is you have some selectability with your battery operation so we've got these two buttons right here if you press this ev it'll put us into ev only mode so normally when you get into this outlander you've plugged it in overnight you've got a full charge you, you cold start it in the morning the engine will kick on and kind of start to warm the system up a little bit and that's great but let's say you don't want to run the engine you just hit this ev button and it'll be electric only and there's about maybe 80 horsepower of power from the 60 70 kilowatt motors and they can get you up to about 90 miles per hour which is okay i'll show you what that looks like and feels like once we get on the road once we start driving this thing alternatively you can save your battery to state of charge or you can actually charge the battery with the engine which is what i just did now you see the engine kick on kind of cool we're just going to leave it in normal mode drive it around like that and then we'll play around with some of the other drive modes later on in the video Let's talk some more about this interior. We have a glove box and Mitsubishi's very cool red outlined user manual and first aid kit. Look at all this medical stuff in here. This has treatments for eye injury, burns, poisoning, bleeding. Is there a snake bite kit in there too? There might be, I don't know. Wow, butterfly closure strips, scissors. I mean, you can really adventure in your Mitsubishi Outlander and come out alive. I think something like this will do very well in the snow, okay in the mud, um, not so well in the sand. Um, haven't tested that firsthand, but that's kind of what I've been able to garner from other videos and, and some other content on this Mitsubishi Outlander. We have a nicely leather wrapped steering wheel, these fantastic flappy paddle paddle shifters, which control regenerative braking. More on that a little bit later lane departure warning buttons a button to pop the trunk the fuel tank and we've got a few different displays here in this center digital display you can see our super all-wheel control you can see we've got about a half state of charge right now 13 miles to empty on electric 191 miles to empty with the gasoline engine 
There's also this twin motor four-wheel drive selector button here, which can give you a snow mode, a lock, which will lock the power 50-50, and then there's also a sport mode, which will give you a little bit more throttle response, which is always nice. We're just gonna leave all that normal for now. And really, this stuff only comes into play in slippery conditions. Seat heating controls down here, high, low. Again, switches look like they're from the 90s. A little bit of storage right here in the center console. Look at this carbon fiber-like finish. This is all very nice. It's kind of plastered throughout this interior. A little bit nicer than I've seen some other cars. A couple of cup holders. Uh, we've got a grippy rubber lining in the bottom there, which you can take out clean. Very nice. Sunglass holder. No sunroof or moonroof situation and no sliding visors. A bit of an oversight for Mitsubishi, but that's okay. Um, I like the functionality of this interior. I do not like the way it looks or makes you feel. It does not feel special or luxurious or very nice, but some parts of it are great. Some parts of it are not so great. I'll let you guys decide. If stuff like that doesn't really matter to you, then hey, this is a perfectly fine automobile. Let's show you guys the reverse camera. Put my seatbelt on. Uh, a little bit of a disappointment, kind of dark, kind of, um, eh, a little bit off-center. You can see the lines don't rotate, but you can hear there's a little bit of a noise emitted from a speaker underneath the car, just to let people know that you're reversing. Kind of nice. Not as uh, loud and outlandish as the Hyundai Kona that we had last week. All right, I think that covers just about everything I wanted to talk about with the walk-around. Let's take this thing for a drive. We're gonna start off in normal drive mode. Let's actually show you guys an energy flow monitor, and you can kind of see what's going on in the background with the drive systems. So we're in normal electric power. Oh, another thing here, before we get started, you'll notice this gauge cluster. Didn't really talk about that. Of course, we've got our speedometer on the right, but on the left, we have this electric sweeping gauge right here that shows us how much power we're using through the electric motors. And then on this side, once you cross into this section, this is uh, internal combustion engine. So instead of an RPM display, that's not 10,000 RPM, <laughs> that's kilowatts. So 10 kilowatts, 50 kilowatts, 100 kilowatts. And that's interesting because that's the amount of power that the engine is putting into the electric motors to put into the ground under the tires. All right, so with that in mind, let's set off. Now, when you first start up this Mitsubishi Outlander, the engine's gonna kick on, it's gonna warm everything up and run for a few minutes until it'll turn off and let you run in hybrid mode. So basically in normal drive mode, for most of your driving, you can get away with driving this in full electric until the battery runs out if you have a full charge. But if you put your foot down a little bit more, the gasoline engine will kick on. There's a smooth transition between electric and gas. You'll hear a little click behind the uh, gauge cluster there, and the engine will turn on and give you more power, which is nice. 221 horsepower combined. We'll test that right up here. Brake pedal feels nice, ride quality is excellent, super soft, super cushy. A little bit of rattling from the back seat area there. All right, so we're in electric, electric, put my foot down, engine kicks on. Pretty seamless, pretty smooth. This is full throttle. Power delivery is very smooth, seamless, linear. It's responsive, but it never quite really comes on quickly. And then off throttle, the engine will turn off. You'll get a little bit of regenerative braking. And you can hit your paddle shifters to get even more regen. This is full regen right now. V5, as it says on the readout. It will not come to a complete stop with regen braking but you get a pretty good amount of acceleration in electric only mode. Now, speaking of electric only mode, let's switch into that. So we've been driving around in normal hybrid. We press this button that says EV and there's a little kick down switch. Any space before that kick down switch on the accelerator pedal is full throttle in electric mode. You push past that kick down and the gasoline engine kicks on and gives you more power, which is kind of nice because if you need that power, 
for safety reasons, you can access it in pure EV mode. All right, so let's show you full throttle here in electric only mode. Like I said, we have a 70 kilowatt electric motor in the rear. I think a 60 kilowatt in the front. I don't think they upgraded that for the 21 model year. We'll slow down a little bit here and give it the beans. Definitely enough power to get you up to speed in normal driving situations. All right, we're gonna exit EV only mode and go into sport mode. Let's see what happens. Gasoline engine just kicked on. See how the super all-wheel control handles. A little bit of body roll, a little bit of tire rollover. We do have some brake torque vectoring, a little bit of yaw control, getting the front end turned in there. Does it translate to anything in the real world? Not really. <laughs> Still a pretty uh, sloppy, uninspiring driving experience. Not the most exciting handling or the best handling. We have eco-oriented tires that are holding us back quite a bit. We'll take it out of sport mode, put us back into normal. You can see engine kicks back off. We're in full electric. Pretty cool. And if you put your foot down too much, the engine will kick on again. So it operates pretty similarly to a lot of the other plug-in hybrids on the market today. We have ample electric power to get us up to speed. And I think the rest of this powertrain delivers okay on the power front. You can hear there's a bit of wind noise on the highway. You put it into cruise control, and you actually can't operate cruise control in pure EV mode, which is interesting. It'll cancel EV mode and put you back into normal, which is fine, because you can still cruise on the highway in pure EV if you have the charge left. Great visibility all around this Outlander plug-in hybrid. A little bit noisy on the highway, but not too bad. You can see we have eight miles remaining on our electric range. Let's bring us down from speed. This is still kind of an old school, dumb cruise control system. It doesn't even show you the speed that you've set it to, but it works pretty well. It's responsive. It seems like every click changes about a mile per hour. Again, I'm sure all of this is going to be vastly updated and improved and modernized in the new Mitsubishi Outlander. I don't know. I think this is an interesting car. It offers good value for money. The electric driving range goes away pretty quickly on the highway, but 24 miles is a decent usable amount of range be nice to have more but for the price and for the availability of these cars I saw used examples as low as twenty two twenty three thousand dollars listed earlier today could be a pretty cool option I've averaged anywhere between 40 to 80 miles to the gallon in this week depending on my distance of driving and my state of charge again on 240 in a garage charge this from zero to full in about four hours which is pretty good or you can quick charge it if you have a Chatamo charger uh, fast charger available at work or when you're out and about let's go back into sport mode see how this handles at lower speeds on throttle there's some interesting rotation characteristics take us out of sport mode go back into normal Honestly, I've liked driving this Outlander plug-in hybrid around this week. It's not the sexiest, most exciting thing. It's just a normal car, and sometimes that's refreshing. We have a lot of physical controls. It's easy to use, except we don't have a volume knob, which is a bit strange, but you can easily use the volume switch here on the steering wheel. I think if you're looking for something exciting to drive, this is not the car, but if you just want a normal car that's a plug-in hybrid and you really value some of the merits of this powertrain and what it can deliver, this could be a pretty good option that could save you some money compared to a lot of its competitors. We're definitely missing some features here that a lot of people appreciate, but 
again, a lot of pros, a lot of cons to this Mitsubishi Outliner plug-in hybrid, um, and you can kind of decide for yourself if they fit in with your uh, with your preferences with your next car. I don't think the driving dynamics are as bad as some people have made them out to be in this Outlander. Uh, you read some articles about this, you watch some videos on it, and it makes it seem like the steering is just completely disconnected. It's not. We just have a lot of sidewall. We just have a lot of uh, body motion, which I think is fine. It adds a lot of ride comfort to this driving experience. This is a very cushy, comfortable car to drive around. Let's do a little zero to 60 acceleration here. So normal, no, no special settings, just setting off. One interesting note, you can hear if you're wearing headphones, a little bit of just voltage sound from that rear electric motor or the, maybe the battery system at full throttle gives this a little bit more of an old school feel. Oh yeah. <laughs> Here we go. A little bit of rotation on throttle, which is nice. Anyway guys, all interesting things to consider with this Outlander plug-in hybrid. I think it's cool that this was the first crossover to market. Uh, it's nice that Mitsubishi has made some sl you know, subtle slight improvements to this with a mild uh, underbody refresh in the 21 model year. It is very interesting to see what they do with this technology in the future. It'd be very cool to see something like this dual motor, twin motor, all wheel drive setup, electric drive setup in a future Evo or performance product from Mitsubishi that isn't a crossover. But for now, um, does all this technology translate to an excited driving experience? No, but, but it's interesting. And I think as, a, as just a normal, regular car that happens to be a plug-in hybrid, this hits a, a nice mark in the market. And as a value proposition, it could be a nice purchase for some people. I have enjoyed driving it this week. It's unassuming, it's comfortable, it has Apple CarPlay, a decent sound system. Actually, let's wrap up the video and we'll test that out here in a minute. So those are my thoughts on the Mitsubishi Outliner plug-in hybrid. If you wanna see some more videos on this, check out the Winding Road Magazine and Daily Motor YouTube channels. The guys will also be doing videos of this car on those channels. Hopefully, this has given you a pretty thorough review of this car as we send it off and look forward to driving the refreshed and updated Mitsubishi Outliner that's based on the Nissan Rogue. We're seeing that in our fleet here, I think in a couple weeks, we'll get to test one. So stay tuned for that video. Let's go straight into the sound system test. And if you're not interested in that, you can uh, go watch another video. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you later. Take care.
a decent sound system for 30, 35 grand. Sounds okay. I like the controls. Everything is easy to operate. You have nice volume and track selection controls here on the steering wheel. guys that's it for this one thanks for watching we'll see you in the next video take care and i think uh the battery just ran out and we kicked into gasoline engine mode cool what a way to end the review <laughs> all right see you guys later take care